On today's episode of Insights from the Farm, we're joined by Karsten Temme, the Chief Innovation Officer and co-founder of Pivot Bio, to talk about the recently published paper from the University of Wisconsin and Purdue validating Proven 40 as a new mode of action in delivering nitrogen to your crops. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Insights from the Farm. On today's episode, we've got a bit of a unique episode, a special episode, if you will. Today, we've got Pivot Bio's co-founder and current chief innovation officer, Karsten Temme, here with us. And we're going to be talking through a newly published paper about the mode of action from Pivot Bio's Proven 40. This paper that was published by the University of Wisconsin-Madison and Purdue University really validates the new mode of action that Proven 40 is bringing to fertility programs in the countryside. This great science is really going to help people to understand how Proven 40 works and how it's adding a new mode of action to their farm and supplementing their current nitrogen program by providing a durable source of nitrogen that's going to help them to mitigate risk and protect that top end yield potential. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not great at reading through scientific papers and really picking out the notes that we we really need to see. So I'm glad to have our our, our guide with us today and Carson Temme, who's going to really walk us through this paper and break it down into practical terms that everyone can understand to see the validation of this new mode of action in nitrogen. Carson, thanks for joining the podcast today. Yeah, awesome to be here. Really looking forward to getting to share more about what the team at Pivot, the scientists working on this paper have have done to dig into the details of this new mode of action. Now, Carson, you, you've been at Pivot a long time, one of the founders, uh, one of the, the people that has really driven the science on this. And, and, and it was really interesting when we were talking the other day. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a scientist, right? And and looking at the this peer-reviewed paper, that sounds semi-intimidating, right? You look at that and you go, wow, how, how's a lay person going to get into that? And and it really it really kind of struck for me how much more simple this can be when you were talking through how you really think about reviewing uh, reviewing a scientific paper. W- would you mind, you know, just talking uh, our viewers through how you look at these peer reviewed papers and, and really try to digest them? Well, happy to. And, and you know what I thought what we would do? We can post a, a link to the paper so you can download your own copy. But I thought maybe today we could just kind of buzz through and I'll share some of the tips that I received when I went to grad school back in the day. Uh, to, to really build the blueprint for what Pivot is, is built on and, and the lessons I, I learned on how to do a quick glance at a paper and, and kind of get the gist of what's going on. So if that sounds good to you, Rick, let's, let's dive in. That sounds great to me, Carson. So why don't you go ahead and get us started here? Well, happy to. All right. First tip is, is take a look at the abstract. That should be a, a, a one paragraph summary of all the details going on in the paper. And, and you can get a sense for what you should be looking as the punchline. So I'll read from our abstract here. We present evidence from in vitro, meaning in a test tube, in planta, I uh, think the greenhouse, and field experiments that confirms that our genetic remodeling strategy derepresses biological nitrogen fixation activity in a nitrogen-rich system and increases ammonium excretion by orders of magnitude above the respective wild type strains. All right, a lot to unpack there, but basically this says we're gonna show you a lot of data that this new mode of action, microbes fixing nitrogen and putting that ammonia in the plant is, is proven for the first time. And it's, it's the first time we've had this kind of science available uh, for nitrogen fixation in cereal crops. Well, I'm glad I've got you here as a guide because as you, as you read through that abstract, that was a little bit like Swahili to me. So it's it's good to have a translator that uh, that can help us to understand what we're seeing inside of the paper. Well, let, let's do this. Let's take a look at that that first figure. Now, it's it. There's a lot going on there, but if you look at the top half, left side, right side, it shows you in the soil today. We use fertilizer. It's the fuel that makes our, our crops grow. It's what powers all that yield at the end of the season. Uh, the challenge, though, is all those microbes in the soil that could fix nitrogen, they are dormant. They sense that nitrate. They don't make the enzymes for nitrogen fixation. Now, what we do at Pivot is we use gene editing to turn that functionality back on. That's what's shown on the, the right half of that figure at the top. So even though we are using fertilizer, those microbes aren't sensitive to that. They become a new source 
point source of nitrogen fixed on demand for the crop, and they can complement that fertilizer strategy. And then at the bottom of the page, that's the blueprint for how the scientists do this genetic remodeling. So it's just rewiring how the microbe can produce the enzymes to fix nitrogen, and then how it shares that ammonia back to the crop. So Carson, what you're saying is that, you know, what, what makes Pivot Bio's Proven 40 different from everything else on the market is those gene edits that are allowing the microbes to continue to make nitrogen available to the plants, even when there's other nitrogen available in the soil around them. Totally. Think of just being able to turn up the thermostat at your house. There's a lot of electrical wiring and circuitry inside of that thermostat signaling for the furnace to kick on. That's what our team is doing. We're, we're improving those genetics. So those microbes are really good at making the enzymes to fix nitrogen. And then they're really efficient at sharing all of that ammonia back with the crop. That's never been done before. And there's no other products on the market that work like this today, right? Exactly. And so it's this, this new opportunity to tap into a new mode of action for nitrogen fixation. Now, if you flip over to figure 2B, it's showing just how much ammonia these microbes are making compared to their wild ancestors. And what you'll see here is, is just a couple of bars. Uh, we show WT, that stands for wild type, those ancestors, those, those microbes that are originally found, natively found in the roots of the corn crop. Now, when we use that gene editing, we can turn on just how much ammonia they make. And that's what uh, that third bar in the bottom left and that fourth bar in the bottom right, what that means. Look at how much more ammonia those are making compared to the rest of the, uh, the bars there. It's so, a significant amount. A massive amount. Uh, we've never been, we went from zero to, to a meaningful amount of ammonia, and that's being produced, spoon-fed to the plant on a daily basis. So... All that data looks really impressive, Carson, but you know, this is happening in a lab. I mean, what, what, what happens when we take this out to, to the real world and see this thing happen in the field? All right, so the first thing we gotta do is make sure that even though these microbes are fixing ammonia, that that ammonia is getting in the plant and it's, it's helping the plant grow uh, more biomass and ultimately producing more yield. Now, the way we do that is we actually use different isotopes of nitrogen gas to trace how that nitrogen in the atmosphere gets into the plant. And so most nitrogen, its atomic number is 14. Uh, it has seven neutrons in its nucleus. And, and there are some isotopes that have one extra neutron and, and you can measure that with some pretty sensitive mass spectrometers. So what we do is, is we'll grow some corn plants with our microbes in the root system in a, an enclosed environment and then inject nitrogen gas into the atmosphere that has an extra neutron. Now, if we find that inside of the plant, in the chlorophyll of the, the plant, there's uh, extra neutrons in the nitrogen compounds, there's only one way it got there. It didn't come from the soil. It didn't come from fertilizer. It only could have gotten in the plant because the microbes are fixing that atmospheric nitrogen and then sharing that ammonia with the crop. And then the crop makes uh, that into all the biomass, the DNA, proteins, and ultimately the, the chlorophyll. That's that's pretty wild. We we could probably spend an hour talking about just how we we came up with this test to start with. But if if I boil this down, what you're saying is we're we're essentially tagging the nitrogen in the in the air that the microbe is then pulling down and making available to the crop, and then we're able to track that into the crop as a way of demonstrating that it's actually working. Exactly, it's the gold standard of assays. The only way that nitrogen could have gotten in the crop is from the microbe itself. That's pretty unbelievable. All right, so let's take that out to the field and we can use that isotope to track uh, just how much nitrogen is uh, entering the plant from fertilizer or from nitrogen fixation. But instead of trying to put that labeled isotope into the atmosphere, we put it into either the fertilizer or we look at the, um, the natural levels of that isotope in the soil itself. Now to do these studies, we worked with collaborators at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and at Purdue University. And in both cases, they use these two different methods to be able to show nitrogen being fixed by the microbes and put into the crop. So two figures, two great institutions, great research teams showing um, multiple ways of this new mode of action working in the field. Always great to be able to work with those, uh, those Big Ten schools that uh, have done so much research and uh, are so trusted by farmers all throughout the Corn Belt. 
Well, totally. And, you know, maybe the last part I'll, I'll stop on or highlight is across the, the next three figures. Now, this really starts showing, well, how does this fit into the agronomic setting? And does this work on my farm? And what, what you'll see is uh, a series of studies being able to look at the impact on yield, being able to say, can you replace up to 40 pounds of synthetic fertilizer and achieve equal to or better yields? And, and really, the, the punchline is, yes, that's, that's what we show across these next three figures, uh, culminating in uh, 135 uh, on-farm, side-by-side uh, grower trials. Where, I, where growers were replacing up to 40 pounds of synthetic nitrogen and uh, achieving not just uh, equal to or better yields, but uh, more in-plant nitrogen uh, during those late vegetative stages, priming the, the crop to be a, a better biomass um, or a better factory for yield uh, as you enter the late stages of the season. That's that's really awesome. And you think about, you know, what we've talked about on Insights from the Farm all harvest long, Carson, has been the great stories that we've heard from the countryside. We've talked to farmers, we've talked to sales reps, we've talked to, to territory sales managers about the successes that they've seen on individual farms. And, you know, what we're seeing here in this paper is is peer reviewed science that's that's backing that up. Right. Um, a significant amount of fields where we've seen proven 40 work exactly as advertised. Well, it's, uh, it's a, a great way to see a new mode of action in action. This is uh, nitrogen being fixed, uh, put into the plant during those late vegetative stages. It's priming the plant to be more resilient, uh, better equipped to be able to, to reach your yield targets. And we've done it in collaboration with a couple of great uh, Big Ten schools, uh, researchers uh, uh, on the cutting edge of being able to track nitrogen as it moves around the environment and as it's fixed and put directly in the crop. A new mode of action in action. I, I see what you did there. So you're not just the chief, chief science officer, but you're also a part-time marketer, I guess. Well, hey, we, we don't want to spend too much time in a scientific paper. The purpose of today's episode is to try to distill this thing down into bite-sized chunks that everybody out on the internet can really understand. So Carson, if you, if you kind of summarize what we've seen today and what the paper is saying, how would you break all of that down in a way that uh, the folks out on the internet can really understand? Well, first and foremost, the, the thing to remember is Pivot has used gene editing to enable microbes that, that are living in the roots of the corn crop uh, to fix more than a thousand times more nitrogen uh, than they otherwise would. Normally, they're dormant. They're not able to fix nitrogen and, and complement your fertility strategy. Now, we've unlocked that capability. And we've started to, to uncover, using some really cutting edge science, just how those microbes are fixing that nitrogen and putting it in the crop during those vegetative stages of growth when the, the crop's nitrogen requirements are greatest. So we're always going to be at the cutting edge, driving that nitrogen science further, driving that, that fertility science to the fruition of how do you produce and fuel the, the crop for best yield achievement. It's, it's really an exciting thing, right? You, you think about bringing the first new mode of action to nitrogen this century and have this peer-reviewed paper, this scientific backing showing not just how it works, but that it does work and, and, and really has been reviewed by a number of different industry experts. This is, uh, this is the type of stuff that uh, can get people really excited about how adding another form of nitrogen to their farm and to their fertility plan that doesn't leach that has that durability and that can complement the rest of their fertility plan can really help them to protect that top end yield potential and mitigate risk. Exactly. And, and what I'd uh, offer as an invitation to everybody out there is get in touch with our team, because as you can tell, we're at the cutting edge of science. We really want to be able to get into the weeds with you and, and take a look at how you manage fertility on your farm. Uh, have a conversation on how to, to get the most out of both the microbes in our product, but all the rest of those forms of, of nitrogen and the other nutrients you use. Because ultimately, we're just trying to make a crop that is better able to withstand all of the, the challenges that Mother Nature throws at you in order to be able to hit your yield target. 
Karsten, this has been really educational. Appreciate you joining the podcast today and walking us through this scientific paper. Rick, always a pleasure. All right. Well, that's going to wrap another episode of Insights from the Farm. I want to thank our special guest today, co-founder of Pivot Bio and Chief Innovation Officer, Karsten Temme. It was amazing to have someone with Karsten's knowledge and background to walk us through this peer-reviewed scientific paper that's really validating the new mode of action that Pivot Bio's Proven 40 is making available to farmers to add to their fertility programs. This really backs up what we've seen all harvest season across the podcast here, and the farmers that we've talked to, the sales reps, and all the folks that have shared their stories about how they've been able to replace up to 40 pounds of their fertility program with Pivot Bio's Proven 40 and seeing the same or better yields. Uh, If you'd like to see more results from areas around you, you can visit our harvest landing page at www.pivotsprovenit.com to see both national and state-based results for farmers just like you that are adding that new mode of action to their fertility program and seeing great results. We want to thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today taking a look at the mode of action paper, and we'll see you next week with more insights from around the farm.